At number 10, we have She's Lost Her Drawing Power. Now, Cameron can still turn a basic movie into a box office hit. If you take a look at movies like Bad Teacher and The Other Woman, these movies both had middling reviews and Cameron was able to bring in millions of dollars to the box office. The problem is, however, for every hit she's had, she's also had some pretty major flops that the critics have ripped apart and these movies have shown some pretty disappointing returns at the box office. Even in the movie musical Annie, it was a disappointment when its release failed to catch on with audiences earning just $85 million off a staggering $65 million budget, which proves that Cameron may no longer be bankable on just her star power alone. And number nine, she peaked early. So part of the reason why it's such a downer to see Cameron's career to where it is today compared to where it was before has to do with the fact that just over 20 years ago, she was positioning herself to become one of Hollywood's greatest comedic actors. In 1997, she added death and humor to her character in My Best Friend's Wedding, and the press and critics quickly took notice. The following year, Cameron's performance in the film Something About Mary would earn her the Best Actress Award for the New York Film Critics Circle. In 2003, her performances were even able to nab her a Globe and Globe nomination. Cameron's early career demonstrated her star power from Something About Mary to Charlie's Angels and her career trajectory became even more frustrating as she wasn't able to live up to the expectations Hollywood wanted for her. Are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. At number eight, we have her comfort zone. So it's said the real reason Cameron is not able to live up to what Hollywood is now wanting from her is because despite her desire to get out of her comfort zone, she always seems to end up back in it. In the last decade, Cameron has been typecasted and has been forced to play variations of the same characters. In the movie What Happened in Vegas, Cameron is a career woman who marries a party boy. In the movie Night and Day, she plays a single woman who gets tangled up in a fugitive relationship with a spy. In the movie What to Expect When You're Expecting, Cameron plays a celebrity fitness guru caught off guard by oh so equalizing demands of pregnancy. And in the 2011 film Bad Teacher, Cameron did end up switching the gears in a raunch mode. However, the movie was still a rom-com. It's gotten to the point that Cameron's career has been so equivalent to writing an essay the night before it's due. You know the moment when you think the essay is great and you're gonna ace it. However, you're most likely get a C on it and you're just gonna have to accept it was good enough. And number seven, Shrek overstayed its welcome. Now Shrek started off as something unique. However, by the third movie, nobody wanted to see or hear from it ever again. Now naturally, the film had impressive box office returns and it warranted a couple sequels. However, it wasn't necessary for Hollywood to stretch out the franchise to a fourth movie. By 2010, when Shrek Forever After debuted, it was the lowest grossing film in the franchise since it all started. The audience would then finally be over the once lovable green ogres and they were ready to move on to something more creative in the animated sequels. Now, the screenwriter, Michael McCullers, even told The Hollywood Reporter back in 2019, he had began writing a fifth installment for Shrek, which had some pretty big reinventions planned, which meant that Cameron probably wouldn't even be asked to return. And number six, the sun definitely did not not come out for Annie. Now, when you compare the 2014 remake of Annie to the original 1982 version, a lot of fans disagree with the remake of the beloved musical for many reasons. Hollywood missed a legitimate chance to make something great out of a musical, and instead of keeping it legit, they changed a lot from the beloved storyline. And that drove fans nuts. The remake did provide a rare opportunity for Annie to be played by a young black actress, and in return, it provided a rare opportunity for Hollywood to make a movie for young black kids and that's definitely something we had to praise Hollywood for this golden move. For Cameron, however, Annie allowed her to sink her teeth into a meaty role against the other roles she's been typecasted in. This role would make older generations look at her in a new light while introducing herself to an entirely new set of moviegoers. But the fact that her talent was drawn out by a bad script and bad autotune, it still made a lot of viewers mad. Sometimes it's just best to leave a film how it is rather than trying to make it more current and up to date. So if you're listening and watching this, someone, please save Annie. At number five, she earned an early retirement. Even though Cameron started off her career late as an actress, she was able to find more success in Hollywood than most actors will ever see in their lifetime. Her debut in the movie The Mask grossed more than $350 million worldwide, and it paved a way for Cameron to enjoy a career in which she could turn even the most basic movies like Charlie's Angels into a million dollar success. We also can't ignore the Shrek machine that went underway in 2001 after after four movies in the wildly popular film in which Cameron voiced the beloved character of Princess Fiona, it grossed over $1 billion just in the United States alone, meaning the actress could have retired years ago.
ago just off of her success. So her absence isn't really shocking. Number four, her books have hidden messages. So since Cameron has been absent on the big screen over the last few years, she's actually begun carving her career as a lifestyle author. In 2013, she wrote the bestseller, The Body Book, Feed, Move, Understand, and Love Your Amazing Body. On the heels of that success, she also released a book in 2016, which examined the art and science of growing older and offered women to choose healthier lifestyles while feeling younger. In an interview, Cameron would highlight how the studio and film industry has a certain perception on how your body should look, and it's scary and a dangerous thing to put in someone's mind. That's why her books are more focused on personal wellness, because you don't need to look younger to feel younger, and it all starts with taking care of your health and taking the time to love yourself for who you are and not for what people want you to be. At number three, we have Selma Spilled the Tea. So longtime friend Selma Blair dropped an unintentional bombshell when she talked about Cameron during an interview with Evening Standards. So Selma would go on to say that she would love to do a sequel with Cameron, however, she has since retired from acting. The actress would then note that Cameron has had an amazing career and she's been so successful that she doesn't need to return back to Hollywood. To no surprise, the internet would go into a frenzy at the announcement considering Cameron never made it. Inside sources have since said that Cameron is being consistently asked to do films to get her out of retirement and she's simply just not interested in returning back to the big screen anytime soon. But I guess we'll just have to wait for Cameron to clear this all up for herself. And number two, acting pro tip. So Cameron isn't known for picking the best scripts to be a part of. And it's still shocking just how badly some of these movies she's been in have been reviewed. Now, none of her films since Norman Lloyd have been given a fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes and that even includes the Shrek franchise. Not to mention Cameron's most recent film also collected some of the worst reviews in her entire career. In the movie The Counselor, critics have dubbed the movie unbelievably awful, partly because the actress could be seen seducing a yellow convertible. Entertainment Weekly has also referred to the scene as one of the worst scenes of the year when the movie was released. That tidbit alone shows how rough her career in films has become and why companies are so hesitant to work with her. And at number one today, we have her retirement. Now, it's not 100% sure that Cameron is serious when she tossed some headline comments during a reunion with the Sweetest Thing co-stars. However, she was telling the truth and it seems like her breakup with Hollywood was mutual. Cameron would state that she was semi-retired, however, she would love to still hang out with her old castmates from the movie The Sweetest Thing. So it would go on to show that Cameron has retired, however, she is still considering roles for the future. Now, Cameron will always have a career in Hollywood, assuming she would ever want to come back as an actress and she definitely wouldn't have any problem finding her foot in again. Zoe Kravitz was one of many celebrities that condemned the actions of Will Smith that took place at the 2022 Oscars last Sunday. After Will Smith slapped Chris Rock following a joke about his wife Jada's bald head, Hollywood was left in shock over how to deal with the incident. Zoe Kravitz was one of the people that shared her disapproval on Instagram. A few days after the event, she posted a photo of her outfit at the award show with a caption reading, quote, Here's a picture of my dress at the award show where we are apparently assaulting people on stage now. A few hours later, she was showing off her outfit for the after party, and the caption on that photo read, quote, and here's the picture of my dress at the party after the award show, where we are apparently assaulting people on stage now. Immediately, she started to get pushback, with commenters telling her she should stay out of it, and it's not her place to comment on what happened between the two men. Then things got significantly worse when people on Twitter brought up some old interviews that she gave, where she spoke about Jaden Smith, Will, and Jada's son. Many of her comments were deemed inappropriate, and she was quickly called out for being inappropriate with him. Specifically during one interview, Zoe said how she had a close relationship with Jaden, and at times she had to remember that he was much younger than her. In a 2013 interview with V Magazine, she made some pretty concerning comments. At this time, Zoe was 24, while Jaden was only 14. She said in part, quote, There were moments where I was hanging out with Jaden and thinking, I can't believe you're 14. I have to check myself, like what I say to you. Adding, quote, he has so much personality and so much swag, he is so much cooler than I am, and he's so handsome. I was always like, when you're older, you know, we'll hang out. Nope, that's inappropriate. Clearly pretty concerning that she would speak of him this way when he was barely a teenager and 10 years younger than her. But that's not all. A red carpet interview also resurfaced that is just as concerning. In the clip, we see that Zoe is on a red carpet speaking to a reporter when she notices Jaden in the background. She then calls him over and they hug during this interview. During the clip, we see Zoe call Jaden her date and even claim that he is the love of her life. At the time of this clip, Kravitz was 26 and Jaden was only 16. 
Zoe also said multiple times that she dragged him out to the award show that night so he could be her date. She added that she texted him that he had to come out with her, so he did. This is not the only time she's exhibited some questionable behavior. She's also been called out for her friendship with controversial fashion designer Alexander Wang. Wang has been accused of inappropriate conduct with models and other celebrities in the past, and recently admitted to some of this conduct. At first, Wang denied the multiple allegations against him, calling them fabricated. But a few months later, he shared a different type of message, expressing regret for his past behavior, saying in a statement, quote, It was not easy for them to share their stories, and I regret acting in a way that caused them pain. While we disagree on some of the details of these personal interactions, I will set a better example and use my visibility and influence to encourage others to recognize harmful behaviors. Although he slightly danced around the specifics of what he did wrong, he did own up to some of the behaviors that he was accused of. If you're not aware of the friendship between Kravitz and Wang, it's been ongoing for many years. The friends are so close that Wang even made her a wedding dress for her, which is something he says he only does with his close friends. While speaking with Vogue about the dress, they described that Wang was quote, working with one of his oldest and best friends. With Wang describing quote, Zoe was very clear on her vision, something pure, elegant, timeless, but with depth. She knew the reference she wanted and that was Audrey Hepburn, but we didn't want it to feel too vintage or costumey. Apparently Wang worked on the dress for over a year and did five fittings with Kravitz. He added that working on the dress was sentimental to him and even added a special sentiment to it to honor their friendship. Wang added, quote, I made a special embroidered note for her on the inside and one for her satin lunch bag. He explains, quote, the funny story is that she used to carry a brown paper bag around with her as her purse and we would laugh about it. So for her wedding, I remade it into a white satin. Wang added that he would only consider this undertaking if it was for a good friend, adding, quote, I don't usually do wedding dresses unless I really know the person because it's a personal and intimate process. The last concerning thing that fans are bringing up is the fact that Zoe Kravitz and Ezra Miller dated while Ezra was not of age. A viral tweet claimed that Zoe and Ezra dated when Ezra was 17 and Zoe was over 20 years old. The pair never confirmed if they actually dated or not, but in 2010 it was rumored that the pair were dating while they worked together on the set of the movie, Beware of the Gonzo. Speaking to Collider magazine at the time, Zoe said, quote, Ezra had the part and we met before I was actually hired just to get ready for a chemistry read and there was chemistry. Adding, quote, we became best friends immediately. The pair have a four year age gap between them, which a lot of fans found concerning. It was reported that the pair dated for less than four months in total. While they were working together on the movie, paparazzi snapped a photo of them passionately kissing at a club, which went viral on social media. As of now, Zoe has not commented any further on the Will Smith slap or the claims that have been made about her. However, she did turn off the comments on the Instagram posts showcasing her Oscars dresses, so it's clear she does not want to deal with any more backlash. Since the slap, Smith has faced heavy criticism and the Oscars are starting an investigation to determine what disciplinary action they will take. Wills apologized on social media and recently announced that he will be resigning from the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. Although this hardly changes anything, all this would stop him from doing in the future is voting on the recipients of the awards at each Oscar ceremony. There are approximately 10,000 members in the Academy, all of whom are expected to quote, advance the arts and sciences of motion pictures. This resignation also won't keep Smith from attending future Oscar ceremonies. He most likely will even present the award for Best Actress in 2023, as is customary with each Best Actor winner. Smith can even be nominated and win another Oscar in the future. Academy President David Rubin said, quote, We will continue to move forward with our disciplinary proceedings against Mr. Smith for violations of the Academy's standards of conduct in advance of our next scheduled board meeting on April 18th. So I guess we'll have to wait and see how this all pans out, but let me know your thoughts on the scandal surrounding Zoe Kravitz, and how do you feel about her statements towards Will Smith? But before I go, I'm gonna shout out some comments from top 10 celebrities that defended Chris Rock. Salty Pretzel said, Thank God there are people out there with some sense. My respect for Chris is through the roof. Completely agree. And you could really see too, like he was so taken aback, he didn't know what to do. And then he went to like say something and then he kind of caught himself. And I just really, I was thinking if there were like the other hosts that were there, if there was any other host, I really think that other host would have maybe clapped back, said something about, you know, Will Smith, uh, you know, another joke about his wife, but Chris Rock, you know, kept it together and decided to be the bigger person. And, you know, thankfully it's really paid off. 
Then Siri26 says, if it's illegal, it's not okay regardless of how you feel. He joked about my wife will never fly in a court of law. Sensitive people shouldn't go places where comedians will be performing and sit in the front row. Wow, I mean, that's that's really true. Like, he knew that was his night. It was a really big night for him. So obviously he was going to be, you know, the center of a lot of jokes because, you know, he's getting the highest honor. That's kind of how it works. Uh, still so crazy. I still can't even believe it even happened. Then Corky Corbin said, Chris was up there doing his job and gets attacked for it. I've lost any respect I may have for Mr. Will Smith. My respect for Chris, on the other hand, has gone up immensely. He had to gather himself and shake it off so we could get the show moving forward. I feel really sorry for Questlove as he had his moment in the sun taken from him due to Will Smith and his nonsense. I completely agree. After the Oscars, I had no idea who won, you know, best actress, best picture. I had no idea who won anything. All that could be seen on social media was literally just the slap over and over and over. Then Rami said, aside from Jim Carrey, no A-list or movie star present offered sympathy to Chris. Sad indeed. I completely agree. It's none of the A-list celebrities have really said anything. I guess they're all mainly keeping quiet. I've seen a lot of comedians uh, talking negatively about Will Smith. The only other celebrities I saw were um, Wanda Sykes and uh, Amy Schumer. They're really the and Jim Carrey, obviously the only people I've seen other than Zoe Kravitz and I guess maybe Judd Apatow say something against Will Smith. It's been a lot more like lower level celebrities and comedians. Jessica Alba used to be a mainstay in Hollywood, but then all of a sudden she disappeared and hasn't acted in much since. First up, racial ambiguity. These days being diverse in Hollywood is a positive and most studios are looking to diversify their casting choices. But in the case of Jessica Alba, her ambiguous ethnicity hurt her casting prospects because the industry is not able to fit her into a box like they do with other actors. Jessica Alba came up in the film industry in the late 1990s and early 2000s when it was hard to land spots in big movies unless your complexion was very light. But it seems she was not white enough to get lead roles. Alba spoke to Pop Sugar about how her ethnicity impacted her casting, saying, quote, They couldn't figure out my ethnicity. They were like, You're not Latin enough to play a Latina, and you're not Caucasian enough to play the leading lady, so you're going to be the exotic one. After hearing comments like this, she was more determined than ever to play the leading lady. Since she's helmed tons of movies in her day, it's clear that she met that goal. However, that was short lived, and she's now rarely on the big screen. In case you were wondering, Alba stated that her mother is white and her father is Mexican-American. Aged out of roles. Back when Alba was in her heyday, she was starring in movies as the bombshell side character, known mainly for her good looks. Many of her roles were all about how she looked and increasing the sex appeal of the movie to audiences. Her main roles happened in her mid-twenties, usually a scantily clad love interest or object of desire for male characters. She even graced the pages of adult magazines like Maxim. Since Alba is now older and more mature, she would not consider playing a role like that. But since that's all she's ever played, it would be difficult for a casting director to all of a sudden put her in a different light to audiences that already know Jessica Alba's type. And most of the decisions in casting are based on audience perception. Leading roles flopped. When it comes to casting in leading roles, it does not usually come down to talent, rather how much money studios believe the actor can make. And unfortunately, Alba has not made studios much money when she was the leading lady in her films. This has essentially blacklisted her from ever helming a movie again. Jessica Alba was given a few shots at big screen stardom in the 2000s and sadly did not deliver what executives were looking for. There are only a handful of movies that she played a prominent role in that made over $100 million at the box office. These movies were Fantastic Four and Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, which also starred other big names. Alba had smaller roles in big hits like Little Fockers and Valentine's Day, but her roles were so minimal she's hardly remembered as being in them. Honestly, most of the movies she's been in are pretty forgettable, and I would be hard pressed to name any movies that she's been in. To name some of her biggest flops, the dance flick Honey took in $30 million in 2003, Good Luck Chuck brought in $35 million in 2007, Machete earned $26 million in 2010, and Escape from Planet Earth earned $57 million in 2013. After so many box office flops, it makes no sense for the film industry to take any more chances on her. Next up, harsh reviews. Other than making money, the second benchmark of a good movie is good reviews from the audience and critics. If an actor is able to score both, they have a long career ahead of them, but not being able to get either is a recipe for disaster. Jessica Alba seems to have the disaster formula. Her movies hardly make any money, along with getting horrible reviews. Not one but two movies that she's been in, An Invisible Sign and Killers Anonymous, scored a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. I didn't even know that was possible. While tons of other movies like Good Luck Chuck and The Love Guru 
failed to get over 20%. Even though she wasn't the star of any of these films, the fact that she's been in so many duds has put a stain on her relationship, because there is the potential that she is the bad egg in all of them. Many people have noticed her bad acting, and she's even won Razzies in the past, which are awards given to the worst actors and movies. She's been nominated for Worst Actress three times, Worst Screen Couple once, and actually took home the award for Worst Supporting Actress in 2011. That type of attention is not something you want if you're casting for an important movie. Gave up. One of the main reasons Alba is not working anymore is that she decided to somewhat retire when she was 27. Since then, she's been more focused on having a family and being with her kids. Alba told Access Hollywood, quote, I really stopped acting when I was 27 full time. Adding if I did do a job, it was really kind of a short period of time. But she made a point to not shut the door on acting for good, and instead only take roles when they felt like the right fit. She told Working Mother, quote, I'm open to diving back into acting. It's my passion and my heart. I didn't take time from acting completely, but I certainly didn't make it a focus. At this point, Alba has a big family and other business ventures, so it seems she does not regret her decision. Honest Company Speaking of Alba's other ventures, the most successful has been her beauty brand, The Honest Company. Alba co-founded the company after she had a bad experience using a traditional laundry detergent on her kids' clothes. Her newborn daughter broke out in hives after Alba washed her clothes because the baby could not handle the strong detergent. After this horrible experience, Alba set out to make products without toxins and harsh chemicals that would be safe for kids and people with sensitive skin. She hired Healthy Child, Healthy World author Christopher Gavin as a consultant, and LegalZoom founder Brian Lee to form Love & Honor, renamed The Honest Company when it launched in 2012. The company has been incredibly successful, selling $10 million worth of products in its first year. By 2015, The Honest Company offered more than 130 products and was sold in 4,400 stores. Alba's company generated $150 million that year, right around the time it enjoyed a market valuation of $1.7 billion. Since The Honest Company has been such a success, there's no reason to go back to the acting world. TV shows did no better. Movies are generally where all actors want to be. They don't call the biggest celebrities movie stars for no reason. So when Alba had a hard time getting cast in movies, she took a shot at the next best thing, television. In 2019, Jessica Alba walked away from an acting career focused on movies and took her first leading role in his episodic television show, LA's Finest. The show was about two female cops starring alongside Gabrielle Union. The type of show was pretty typical, being similar to most other cop shows, which is not great if you're trying to get out of a rut. Critical reviews were so-so and -so, scored a 24% on Rotten Tomatoes, with audience ratings not being much better. The show also aired on Spectrum, which didn't help it get attention. Shockingly, the show was renewed for a second season. Fox also decided to buy the show and play reruns on their network to fill empty slots. But unfortunately, the show did even worse on Fox than on Spectrum. The show was obviously not picked up for a third season. After this fiasco, her days on TV were finished. Health is now her priority. While speaking with Romper Magazine, Alba revealed that she quit acting in her heyday because she wanted to focus on her health and being with her kids as much as possible. She explained to the outlet that after she had her first child, Honor, in 2008, her mindset on everything changed. She explained how her mother had cancer when she was very young, in her early 20s, and Alba herself grew up with chronic illness as a child. These experiences made her understand that health is the most important thing in life. Adding, quote, that's really what motivated me. My motivation was not like, am I ever going to get hired again? Frankly, I was at the top of my career. I couldn't go back to what I was doing before and be authentic. I just couldn't. I didn't care about it in the same way. After having children, Alba realized that she wanted to do something bigger with her life and actually make a difference in the world with the platform that she had. One of the main aspects of health is using clean products whenever possible, which is of course what drove her to start The Honest Company in 2012. So that's all for the list. Let me know your thoughts below. Before I go, I'm going to shout out some comments from top 10 celebrity health scares that ended their careers. Jamal Vargas said, I will miss Bruce Willis. Red has to be one of my favorite comic book movies. That in Sin City, he was an acting icon. He definitely, definitely was. I've heard so many good things about Red and Red 2. I've never seen them, but maybe I need to watch them now. Then Mary Beth said, The Julie Andrews has a special place in my heart, but all of these stories are so sad. I hope they can all find treatment that works well for them. It is so sad. I can't believe what happened to Julie Andrews. Like, you know, her singing voice was so iconic and such a big part of her career, and then they ruined it. It's so, so upsetting. And Tammy Webb said, I really hope that Celine Dion will recover from her illness so that she can go back to her music. I just love her so much. Yeah, hers is very shocking because she's been so, um, kind of like mysterious and quiet about what her actual like diagnosis has been. I know she said muscle spasms basically, but she didn't really say what brought it on or like anything that happened. I know Bruce Willis, he said aphasia is the reason 
you know, he's taking a step back. So I would love to know more about what's like the details with Celine, but of course I understand if she doesn't want to share them with the public either. Too much pressure. I know that there are a lot of kids out there who dream of being the next big Hollywood star. A lot of actors begin their careers at young ages, and some of those child actors go on to be pretty big successes, but with that success comes a pretty big downside. Many former child actors have spoken out about their experiences of being in the spotlight at such a young age, and it doesn't sound like all sunshine and rainbows at all. This is one of the grievances that Tom Felton has with his career, and this could be one of the things that has held him back from the entertainment industry in later years. Tom has spoken out about the pressures of being a child actor, and a very famous one at that since he was one of the stars of the biggest film franchises ever. Tom, when talking about his childhood, has said that he kind of resents the Harry Potter series and his part in it because he said that it robbed him of a normal childhood. That's completely understandable since usually kids don't have to grow up in the public eye doing interviews, press conferences, and having paparazzi breathing down their necks. When Tom was asked about how he felt about the Harry Potter series coming to an end, he seemed a little bitter towards the films when he said that he was looking forward to it all being over and to having the freedom of not starring in films anymore because he hated his fame. Saying something like that might make Hollywood a little hesitant about hiring someone who hates their craft and what comes with it. Continuing on about his feelings towards the films and the part he played in his success, Tom told the Daily Mail quote, One thing that people keep on saying to me is that the wealth and fame must have made up for missing out on my childhood. But the idea of money putting a price on your childhood is ridiculous. To me, fame is not a positive thing. The idea of being famous is a lot better than the reality. It's fantastic when you go to premieres and people cheer for you, but it's not real." End quote. His resentment towards everything might have hurt his career in the long run. Career change. Usually when an actor gets out of one project, they start looking for the next big thing, that next big thing normally being another show or movie. But this wasn't exactly the case with Tom Felton. When his fellow Harry Potter castmates wrapped up their time in the franchise, Daniel Radcliffe moved on to Broadway and indie films, Emma Watson went to college, became an ambassador for a number of projects, and continued acting. But for Tom Felton, his next career move after Harry Potter was moving on to music, specifically rap. Yeah. He decided to leave the world of acting behind and got into the music scene, and in 2011 he announced that he had actually signed a contract with an indie label to produce some hip hop music. Speaking out about this new part in his life, the actor said, quote, I was thinking of doing some N-dub style stuff. I am looking to get into the grime rap UK scene. End quote. He continued saying that he was really doing this to change his image. This really goes hand in hand with what he said about resenting his image as an actor and everything that came with it, so again, these comments and sudden career change certainly didn't help him out in Hollywood. What really sucked about this huge career change for Tom was the fact that his music never quite took off. Some songs had hit the public circuit, but not enough to really say that he found his next career path. It hurt his career taking this leap of faith and not having it pan out in his favor. Now before we carry on talking about why Hollywood does doesn't want to work with Tom Felton anymore, why not take a moment to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and while you're at it, consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. Typecasting Because Tom Felton played the role of Draco Malfoy so well, it ended up being more of a hindrance to his career rather than an asset. Draco was pretty much an antagonist character in the Harry Potter series, and because Tom was so good at portraying a character who was mean and cold, this made Hollywood executives want to cast him in more roles similar to Draco's character. Though this could be good in some way, it also puts an actor in a box because no matter what other roles he's cast in, he's still seen as the villain. Tom Felton has spoken out on a number of occasions, saying that his natural personality is nothing like that of Draco Malfoy, so he really wanted to distance himself from playing a villain role. But again, when typecasting comes into play, it's hard to get out of that box that Hollywood has put you in. Even the first role that Tom booked right after Harry Potter ended was an antagonist character, so this really just showed the actor that he was certainly stuck within his craft. Even Harry Potter himself, Daniel Radcliffe, had a hard time booking roles after the series ended because everyone still saw him as the boy wizard, but he worked really hard to break that image and still continues to do so. Maybe if Tom Felton had done what Daniel did, then he would be more successful in Hollywood these days. Adjustment Another reason that Hollywood might be overlooking Tom Felton for new roles could be because of the adjustment period that Tom took after rapping on Harry Potter. Tom has opened up in the past about how it took him some time to get used to the idea of auditioning for roles again and not having them handed to him as the next installment of Harry Potter would start up pretty much right after the last one ended. He had been doing that same routine since starting his work on the films at the age of 12, and so this was a big change for him to have to seek out new work. During an interview with the Daily Mail in 2011, 
2011, Tom opened up about how he had to adjust the auditioning process again, saying that things were much harder for him coming back to it after so many years. He told the publication, quote, I'm much more nervous in auditions now than when I was 11. You take a lot of hits before you get something good. The first few were heartbreaking, end quote. The actor even went on to say that auditioning became so hard for him that he considered walking away from the business altogether. As you can imagine, auditioning is a huge part of being an actor and so nailing an audition is really what makes or breaks one's career. Since Tom had such a hard time getting back into it, Hollywood might have seen this as a huge weakness and might not have wanted to take a chance on the actor because of it. Box office bombs. We all know by now that money is really what matters to people in the film industry. I mean, yeah, there are those few in the industry who do it all for the love of the craft, but for the most part, people are just out here trying to make the big bucks. Film executives want to hire the best people for their projects to make sure that their projects go well and are successful enough to make them lots of dough. So when things go left and films bomb at the box office, it ends up hurting a lot of people. Not only will the studio have lost a lot of money, but the actors would also be blamed for the movie not doing well because of their performance. This can cause actors to lose a lot of credibility in the industry because people rarely want to take a chance on people who might not make the contribution that they're looking for in regards to their film. This could be why Tom Felton hasn't really been hired much in Hollywood these days because some of the films that Tom booked following the end of Harry Potter didn't really do too well. To some, Tom isn't considered a bankable actor in Hollywood because his recent films haven't brought in much money for the studio and that's never a good thing. Being associated with so many box office bombs doesn't make a cast agent's job very easy because they can only do so much to get their client's foot in the door and in front of the director. This is why a lot of actors turn to indie films when coming out of big franchises. Actors like Daniel Radcliffe and Taylor Lautner have gone into the indie circuit after leaving their respective hit films because it's a good way to get into the industry without being pressured to make a lot of money. It's almost like building yourself and your career back from the ground up. So maybe Tom should look into this before really throwing in the towel with Hollywood. He's still a notable name. He's just gotta grind it out to get back on top and back in Hollywood's good books. Maybe we'll see this in the new year. Coming at number 10 today, we have the Oscars. The incident that occurred between Chris Rock and Will Smith has become known as the slap gate that took place during the 94th Academy Awards on March 27, 2022. And it has become a moment that has gone down in history as a night full of mementos, wins, and controversy in equal measure. While the night was supposed to be filled with glamour and applause, the prestigious award award ceremony was plunged into chaos when a Hollywood actor decided to take the stage and smack comedian Chris Rock following a joke Chris made about Will's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, and her balding head. Despite initially laughing at Rock's joke, Will Smith would then shock attendees and views alike when he walked onto the stage at the Oscars and displayed a baffling incident that even had Chris Rock say, wow, Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. To which Smith would then respond, from his seat by shouting, keep my wife's name out of your effing mouth twice at the comedian. Shortly after the incident came, Smith was then announced as the winner of the 2022 Best Actor Award for his lead role in King Richard. Upon receiving the award, which was his first ever Oscar win, Smith would apologize to the Academy and the fellow nominees for his reaction, but he did not apologize to Rock till later. Number nine, Jada Pinkett Smith. It seems like Jada Pinkett Smith just can't stop embarrassing her husband, Will Smith, and while the actress continues to do everything she can to ruin her husband's image, all of us are left to question what type of game she's playing, from her stating that she wished her and her husband were swingers, forcing Will to be on Instagram Live videos, talking about her and Will's intimacy issues, mocking a party Will threw, and talking about her feelings for Tupac, letting the world know about her relationship with another man, and even bringing Will on the Red Table Talk podcast has to address the relationship and not to mention after the infamous Oscar incident. She even declared that her mom forced her to get married to Will and that she never wanted to do it. Seems like Jada just wants to humiliate Will and it makes us question why she's doing it and why Will is still with her. While it seems all of Will's drama revolves around his wife, if he wants to get his foot back into Hollywood at some point, he really needs to make the tough decision and split from her because his career is just in this downward spiral due to her odd actions. Hey my little peaches, are are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming at number eight, we have Margot Robbie. In November 2013, Will was rumored to be hooking up with Margot Robbie on set of their film, 
focus. After photos were leaked of the pair joking around and fake flashing the camera in a photo booth. While well, the rumors were quickly put to rest after a source told E! News that Robbie and Smith were absolutely just friends, that's all. The picture that Will and Margot took were commissioned by the production and the entire cast and crew saw them taken. While the rumors continued to circulate in the years to follow, Margot even seemed to hint at the rumors of her and Smith and set the record straight about her dating life. When she revealed that she had sworn off dating fellow actors and preferred dating someone who wasn't known in Hollywood. But did she just swear off dating fellow actors because she had an affair and really wanted Will to be with her instead of Jada? However, it's pretty disappointing that goofing around on set can be taken so out of context to the point Hollywood tried to damage Will Smith's perfect guy image. Number 7. Resignation from the Academy When Will Smith announced in a statement that he would be resigning from the Academy after his infamous incident with Chris Rock, this wouldn't make his troubles go away. While Will's resignation did come with an apology, it wouldn't stop the Academy's investigation of his conduct. While Rock would go on not to press charges against Will, he would start a lawsuit against Smith, the showrunners, and the security and control of the event for not ensuring the environment was safe. While many Oscar guests are still troubled by the standing ovation Will received after his tearful acceptance speech for his role in King Richard, the resignation could hurt his future in Hollywood. While it doesn't mean that he won't be able to be invited to future award ceremonies or that he can't be nominated for future awards, he will no longer be a voting member of the Academy, which could pose a problem in the future with the actor. Number 6. Will vs. Aunt Viv Do you remember Aunt Viv from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and how she mysteriously vanished from the show at the end of season 3 in 1993? Well, in an interview with Atlanta radio station in 1993, Will Smith would publicly go after Janet Hubert and say, I can't say straight up that Janet Hubert wanted the show to be Aunt Viv of Bel-Air because I know she is going to dog me in the press. She's basically gone from a quarter of a million dollars a year to nothing. She's mad now, but she's been mad all along. She said once, I've been in the business for 10 years and this snotty nose punk comes along and gets a show. No matter what to her, I'm just an antichrist. However, later Janet would then criticize the show and express her dislikes for Will in interviews as their public feud played out. She even swore that she would never appear in a reunion episode and according to TMZ, she said, as I will never have done anything with an a-hole like Will Smith. He's an egomaniac and he has not grown up. This consistent reunion thing will never happen in my lifetime unless there is an apology, which he doesn't know the word. Number 5. The Entanglement When musician August Alsina brought the Smiths relationship into the spotlight back in July of 2020, he would reveal that he had been romantically involved with Jada Pinkett Smith. And then August claimed that Will Smith knew about the relationship and even gave the two his blessing. The whole situation would just be really weird because at first Jada tried to deny August's claims and that they were even in a relationship. And then she did this whole 180 thing and eventually confessed to being in an entanglement with August. August, and then claimed that it was because of her and Will had separated that she decided to go separate ways for a period of time and figure out what she was doing and she even told Will how to figure out how to make himself happy so she could figure out how to make herself happy. And while Jada originally decided she wasn't going to talk about the issue, she then forced Will onto her red table talk show so they could discuss their marriage and relationship and she would explain what she did and why she did it and Will just had to sit there and accept what he was being told and even during the show, Jada said she really felt like their marriage was over and that's why she did what she did. Number 4. The Scientology Issue While neither Will Smith or Jada Pinkett Smith have ever confirmed their religious affiliation with the Church of Scientology, the Smith family has long been rumored to be members of the controversial church. Back in May of 2011, the Men's Vogue magazine, Will would say, I've studied Buddhism and Hinduism and I've studied Scientology through Tom Cruise and nobody is saying anything different. His comments would then go on to earn him a great deal of backlash, especially when he claimed that 98% of the Scientology principles were identical to the Bible. And in October 2018, however, the Bad Boy star would then declare during an appearance on his wife's Red Table Talk show alongside of Jada that his family has never been Scientologists, but there's just so much proof to prove otherwise. Number 3. Scientology School for Kids In July of 2020, The Daily Beast would publish an interview with 
Lee Ramini, the ex-Scientologist turned whistleblower who alleged that Jada was a devoted practitioner of Scientology. In the interview she would say, I know Jada's in. She's been in Scientology a long time. I never saw Will Smith there, but I saw Jada at the Celebrity Center. She would then reveal that Jada and Will even opened up a Scientology school and have since closed it, but Lee also confirmed that she saw Jada at the center all the time. The Daily Beast would then speak to four former teachers and administrators at the New Village Leadership Academy who would insist that the Scientology not only bled into every aspect of the school, but that it was essentially a Scientology school filled with mostly Scientologist teachers that taught students Scientology methods of learning. And apparently the academy began as a homeschool in one of the Smith's unused residents in Indian Hills, California. It was also said that Will and Jada gathered 20 to 30 kids, including their own kids, Jaden and Willow, in their homes. And Will and Jada were also pictured speaking inside the school in that events. Number 2. Boycotting Fans If you're one of those fans who doesn't feel quite ready to see Smith headline another movie, the actor says he respects your wishes. During the promotional lead up to the film Emancipation, which many expected to be an Oscar contender, however it was probably shut out because of Will's poor behavior at the last Oscars, Smith was asked about how he would respond to fans and Will would go on to express nothing but respect to those who haven't yet forgiven him for slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars by saying, I completely understand if somebody is not ready. I would absolutely respect that and allow them their space to not be ready. Which honestly seems pretty fair for him to answer that as we've all been getting a lot from this controversial star. While Will has expressed regret for what happened and concern for how his actions will impact his colleagues, it seems like the boycotting fans have taken a huge toll on his acting career as he has now had films snubbed from the Academy Awards this year and and also many shows and movies have been cancelled over the last year and he hasn't really been able to book any work as producers are scared that having him in a movie could result in negative impact and no one really wants to deal with that situation as of right now and it's pretty sad because Will Smith in my opinion is one of the best actors Hollywood has and no one can play a lot of these roles better than he can. And coming in number one today we have his open marriage. During an interview with GQ in September of 2021, Will Smith would reveal that he and his wife haven't always been in a monogamous relationship and that Jada never believed in a conventional marriage. He would then also say Jada had family members that had an unconventional relationship, so she grew up in a way that was different than how he grew up. And he used this to try to justify their open relationship, which is a very controversial topic in Hollywood still to this day. He would then later hint that both parties have taken advantage of the trust and freedom in the relationship when he would say, there were significant endless discussions about what is relational perfection. And a large part of the relationship monogamy was what we chose to not thinking monogamy as the only relational perfection. But does a healthy relationship mean you accommodate your wife's weird idea what a perfect relationship is? Is. Starting off our list day in the number 10 spot, we have Stolen from Set. You ever wonder why it's said that Sarah Jessica Parker has one of the best closets in the world? Well, it's probably because the star stole so much of the clothing, bags, shoes, and accessories from the set of Sex in the City. Sarah's stealing got so bad that now she has around 95% of the clothing she wore on the hit drama series stored in her closet. While Sarah isn't the only actor who's ever taken things from set, she probably has been the one to take the most expensive. Of things from set, as a lot of her wardrobe was high end designer clothing. Stealing the clothing also caused a lot of problems for the film crew, as when they went to go back and refilm some scenes, they would have to delay it because she had already brought in some of the articles that she was wearing home. So, because of her stealing habits, she lost a lot of credit within the industry. Number nine, Kim Catterall Rift. Gracing the cover of Variety's Power of Woman issue back in 2022, Kim would open up about the SATC revival for the very first time since it aired on HBO Max in 2021. With Kim playing Samantha Jones throughout the original show's six seasons and two movies, many found it disappointing that she was absent from the revival. But it wasn't really a surprise considering we have all been following the messy feud between Kim and her co-stars for years now. With the alleged off-screen tensions being between Sarah and Kim, it's been 
can long presume that it's centered around money, with Sarah being paid significantly more than the other woman on the show, prompting Kim to negotiate a higher salary. However, it seems like their feud ended up causing Kim to close one door and start another chapter as she was heartbroken over Sarah's toxic behavior on set and felt like she just didn't belong. Number 8. Only does projects with smaller budgets Though most people have trouble when it comes to separating Sarah Jessica Parker from Carrie Bradshaw, the truth is, they're completely different people as they live in very different lives. Even their personalities are different in many ways. With Carrie loving all the glitz and glamour, Sarah tends to be a little more down to earth, considering she likes to thrift and buy eco-friendly clothing. There's a huge difference between the two. Sarah once even revealed that she only likes doing acting projects that have a smaller budget, rather than working on huge movies and TV shows. But given her name and what she's worth, a lot of small budget movies or TV shows can't support her pay wage or a budget. On top of everything else, it seems like a small budget movies these days are hard to come by, unless you count short films. When she has found those types of roles, she nearly misses out on them because she didn't want to dye her hair or sign to a long term project, so she just has a lot of trouble with it. Number 7. Chris Noth With all the drama surrounding Chris Noth, a lot of people have had a lot of questions for Sarah Jessica Parker considering she worked with the star on the set. Despite it being months since multiple women came forward to accuse Chris of misconduct, Sarah Jessica Parker would seem to be unprepared when it came to a field of questions on the subject. And when she was asked her reaction to the controversy as a producer, she would tell THR, I don't even know if I'm ready to talk about it, but I don't think I wasn't reacting as a producer. I should have worked on this because it's just, it's just. And then she went on to note that since the allegations came forward, she hasn't spoken to him. But something was odd about her take and it makes you wonder if she knew anything that was going on before it all happened, otherwise why would she act like she was a deer in headlights? Especially since the cast of SATC would come out to say shortly after their allegations and they would say they were sad to hear about the allegations and they supported the woman who had come forward to share their experiences and noted that it must have been a difficult thing for these women to do. Number 6. LGBTQ outrage. Back in 2019, Sarah Jessica Parker sparked a lot of outrage when she made a special mention of the LGBT veterans in her tribute to fallen soldiers on Memorial Day. After the actor was criticized for encouraging decisions and reinforcing stereotypes with her Instagram post, in the post she would say, On this Memorial Day, it is an honor to remember all of our men, women, LGBT veterans who sacrificed, who face selflessly and with grace. You have our last gratitude. Immediately, fans started to call out the star for being too politically correct by giving members of the military a special mention, with one saying, why can't it just be everyone that served? Are we so politically correct that we can't just honor all veterans? And another fan would say, without singling out a certain group, I have a transgender relative. The last thing he wants is to be singled out. His sexuality has nothing to do with service. Number 5. Red Carpet Looks We all know Sarah Jessica Parker is a fashion icon, but there's been times where we all had to look at the actor and say to ourselves, what the heck are you wearing? Now I get it, everybody's style is different and we all have found this sort of comfort in certain things and that's why we wear it and why we shouldn't judge other people. But it's clear that Hollywood is judging Sarah based on her looks as they feel like Carrie just doesn't fit her overall image any longer. With the star wearing whatever she wants, she usually doesn't tend to worry about if her clothing is matching, which causes a lot of Hollywood to seriously raise their eyebrows as they have for a long long time labeled her as a fashion icon and when she pushes boundaries they can't help but think why was she casted into the position of Carrie Bradshaw to begin with. Even with all the scrutiny the actor has chosen to call out her haters by saying most of us try to make a choice that makes us feel good or like ourselves or appropriate for where we're going or who we're going with. We don't walk up to each other and say things like ugh awful. Number 4. Typecasted We all laughed and cried when SATC came to an end. While we all rooted for Mr. Big despite his unfortunate way the show still managed to have a huge impact on us. And it seems like with Sarah Jessica Parker, she's found herself being typecasted as Carrie Bradshaw. As beside from her role in the new Hocus Pocus movie, she hasn't really been casted in anything else. And as she is, her characters are exactly like the character in SATC. With
With her having her first big role after SATC in the film, The Family Stone, her character immediately took us back to an episode where Carrie got caught in the rain and squeals that infamous scream while running down the streets downtown in New York City in heels as her character has all the same emotional hiccups. And within this type of character, it's becoming really outdated in the industry. It's been really hard for her to find roles in the industry as now there are a thousand people in Hollywood auditioning for the same types of roles. And now that she's a little older, she's finding herself being casted out by the younger actors coming up from beneath her. Number three, through some major shade, the world could have almost been a different place as there was a point Sarah was having doubt about her character on SATC. With the show making both Sarah and her character Carrie Bradshaw icons, they were both able to change the way modern audiences view some of the issues that were raised on the show. So it's pretty difficult to imagine that there was a time when Parker was seriously considering not accepting her role. However, her main doubts revolved around not wanting to do a TV series for a long term. But in the end, Darren Starr wanted her to play Bradshaw and she agreed to sign on. But that hasn't stopped her from shading her character and how she addressed it. And she's even gone on to note the major differences they both have and how she never would spend the way her character did on a daily basis. Number two, gray hair. Sarah Jessica Parker has been facing scrutiny for years for having some gray hairs, especially after thousands of fans read an Allure article that detailed fans all about them. With the headline screaming, Sarah Jessica Parker goes gray, images would soon go viral and it became a month to month conversation about how brave Sarah was for bracing her own gray hair. To the point even Sarah is pleading with her fans to go applaud someone else who has courage on something else, especially since she hasn't even stopped coloring her hair in the grays everyone was pointing out or just hair boning highlights that were bleached out from the sun. Coming in at number one, we have Anya Taylor-Joy. Anya Taylor-Joy once got to live out every female's dream of meeting Sarah Jessica Parker and talking about her days on SATC. Unfortunately, the experience seemed more awkward than sweet as the actress went into details about the bad experience when she made an appearance on the Drew Barrymore show. During the interview, Drew would tell the Queen's Gambit star, as a girl, I'm totally in love with you. I heard you like raves, you like SATC, you're cool, you're fun. Age transcends, I just want to hang out with you and bring back dance parties. Drew then went on to ask Anya if it was true that she went up to Sarah Jessica Parker and was like, I'm watching you and big. Anya then cringed at the moment and said, when she fangirled over the star, Sarah just freaked out and was a little uncomfortable and responded by saying, okay, that's I'm going back to my car now. It seems like Sarah was really not into spilling anything out to Anna because she was spilling out her whole bad breakup vibe and she didn't really care to give her knowledge or telling her how she could get through it.